Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. No, it's the Savage Nation, but religion is everywhere now, or the lack thereof. So I'm going to talk about, I promise not to say Hillary once after this, boring. I don't know how you could say she's boring and then talk about it for three hours, but nevertheless, some do. I will use the bell trick if I say the word Obama once more after this. (laughs) Stop it, come on. But I'm going to talk about his desire to destroy achievers and families, farms, and businesses by uh, adding money to the estate tax, money that's already been taxed. What a lying, hateful man this thing is in the White House. How did this man get foisted upon us? I'll never, un- well, I understand. I wrote books on it. I know where he came from. A monster, like a Frankenstein in the White House. We're going to talk about the estate tax and why he's a liar. Hangs around with billionaires who support him and the whole Democrat machine, and the Republican machine for that matter, and then says, oh, we don't want to help millionaires and billionaires. No, it's only affecting a few thousand families. But they're the families that built the country. It's money that's already been taxed. We pay 40% on estate taxes now. What does he want to take it all away from us? You know what this means, the estate tax? Do you know what this really means? Let's say you're a farmer and you worked all your life and you built up your farm and it's a few thousand acres. If you want to turn it over to your son or daughter, it means the communist, criminal government run by Obama and the Democrat machine will take away your farm. You don't have to hit the bell. It's okay. They got the message. So that's topic one. The estate taxes. Well, since we started with him, play the soundbite of the liar. Listen. Uh, it turns out that as president, you end up knowing a lot of people, including a lot of rich people. Oh, Some of them bad. are uh, you know, big supporters of mine, good friends oh. of mine. Warren Buffett's mm-hmm. a great friend of mine. Warren Buffett doesn't need a tax break. He really doesn't. Uh, he, he has too much money to spend. He can't spend it all. Even with all the money he's given away, he still can't spend it all. That's because he doesn't pay his fair share of taxes, and you damn well know it. He receives his income in a way that he only pays 15% its dividend income. The rest of us pay 39%. So why doesn't big mouth phony Warren Buffett pay 39% and then get back to me? That's number one. And number two, it's my money, not yours or Warren Buffett's to steal. We've paid taxes on it. Listen to how he goes on, the demagogue in the White House in clip 10. So why, why would we be giving them a tax break when there are a whole bunch of families who need who help? Who the hell are you to say and, you're and, giving and us a is... tax? Hold it. Hold it. You're not giving me a tax break. You're stealing more money. Everything is backwards in this man's mind. And the reason is, is becomes, he comes from a different culture than you and I. He doesn't have an American mind. He doesn't have American values. He has the values of a third world despot who hates anybody in the middle class. So I want to talk about the estate tax for a while because the Democrats are clearly grave robbers, every one of them. Did you understand what an estate tax is? Farms, businesses that employ people. And they will not survive if the government takes any more money when they pass the farm or the business on to their children. The Chinese will come in and swoop it up for pennies on the dollar. And to keep attacking the rich is exactly what they do. Now, Congress passed a bill to repeal the estate tax yesterday. It's called the death tax to us. While the socialist, Democrat, Islamist party says repealing the estate tax is a giveaway to the rich. They're liars. The evil one in the White House threatened to veto the bill because it would add $269 billion to the budget deficit over the next 10 years. Do you know what that actually adds up to? This gang is adding one and a half trillion dollars to the debt each and every year. This gangster is printing money. This criminal regime is adding a hundred and one and a half trillion dollars each year. And he's worried about twenty six billion dollars a year that he wants to steal from people who earned it and already pay taxes on it. It's double taxation is a death tax. The Republicans did the right thing. Now on to the religion question. My mother said to me when I was a boy, never discuss religion or politics. 
And uh, she was wrong. Because now I'm going to discuss religion because I just discussed politics. Woke up this morning, scanned the sites, and I go to the local San Francisco site, you know, just to see what the degenerates are doing now. See what streets they've des decimated, which buildings they've tried to burn down, which Boy Scouts they try to molest. And I read this, prominent Catholics call on Pope to oust SF Archbishop. My eyes widen. What? In an unprecedented move, more than 100 prominent Roman Catholic donors and church members signed a full-page ad running Thursday in the shameful chronicle that calls on Pope Francis to replace San Francisco Archbishop Salvatore Cordiglione for fostering, quote, an atmosphere of division and intolerance. Now, you know what that's a code, those are code words, right? Whenever you hear the word intolerance, you know it's produced by fascists who are trying to make you conform to their view of the world. This is what we're used to. Now, what is this about? Well, this man, this man, Francisco Archbishop Salvatore Cordiglione, had the nerve to uphold Catholic doctrine. That's right. He's not gay enough. He's not gay friendly enough. He's not same sex marriage enough. He's not global warming enough. So these hundred families are demanding that the Pope replace him. And what did the Archbishop do that got their ire going? Well, he is emphasizing traditional conservative Catholic Church doctrine, including asking high school teachers and staffers at Catholic schools to sign a morality clause which characterizes sex outside of marriage and homosexual relations as, quote, gravely evil. Well, he just stepped on the third rail of San Francisco progressive evil. In their open letter to the Pope, these narrow-minded critics of the Archbishop say that his morality clause is mean-spirited and, quote, sets a pastoral tone that is close to persecution, closer to persecution than evangelization. No, they persecute the rest of us. That's how they do it. This is how bullies operate. They bully you and then say you're a bully for standing up to them. They're the bullies. The Nazis of today are these bullies. So the ad that they took drew condemnation from the archdiocese, which said rightly, by the way, that those who signed it, these hundred families, don't speak for San Francisco's Catholic community. Can you believe this? This is amazing. Now, if you read the list of signatories to this, your hair, your, you know, you, you should say, how could they do a thing like this? They're not religious figures. They're not there to teach us religion. It includes the retired executive director of Catholic Charities, Brian Cahill. Now, you and I both know what Catholic Charities is. It's a slush fund to get around the separation of church and state clause. That's what that is. Former city commissioner and Boudon Bakery executive Lou Gerardo, shame on you, Lou, Retired Swinerton Builders Chairman David Grubb. Businessman and former political consultant Clint Riley and his wife Janet. Shame on you, Clint. You should know better. San Francisco Attorney Michael Kelly and Charles Geschke, Chairman of Adobe Systems and former head of the University of San Francisco Board of Trustees. Also on the list of those opposing the Archbishop is Tom Brady, senior father of New England Patriots quarterback Tom Brady. Shame on you, Tom Brady, senior. You should know better. Now, why are they complaining about this, this archbishop? Here's what he did. He had the nerve to pick a pastor for a parish who, quote, marginalizes women's participation in the church by banning girls from altar service, close quote. And he had the nerve to provide elementary school children with a pamphlet about sexuality, which asked whether they had masturbated, engaged in sodomy, or undergone an abortion. In other words, he is trying to teach them what Catholic doctrine is. I'll go on. And well, he also opposes same-sex marriage. In other words, homosexual marriage. That's the main crime he committed. And so they attacked him. Nibby Brothers Construction Executive Larry Nibby also signed the letter. Shame on you, Mr. Nibby. You should know better. Either you're a Catholic and you go to church, or you don't go to church. You know what I'm saying? Just become uh, a Protestant. Why don't you just become a, one of these not Catholics? Join a church on the other side that's so liberal that it's no longer a church. It's a social club, a drunk tank. Most churches like that, these liberal churches, are drunk tanks from Tuesday to Thursday. They're not religious organizations. They're shells of what they were created for. Now, 
Having said that, I am not a moralist. I actually don't care what anyone does as long as they leave children alone. I am a sexual libertarian. I have been forever. I've said that before. Do what you want. Do who you want. Leave me alone. I'm not interested in it. It disgusts me. I'm about as interested in who you're having sex with as I am in how your digestion works. That's how interesting it is to me. Or your bowel movement would be as, as much interest to me as your sexual activity. I don't give a damn. But, and here's the big but, if you go to church, what are you going there for? To look nice in a hat? You want to show off your, your pretty young wife that you stole from another man? That's not what church is for. It's to impose values on people or at least teach people values so you know right from wrong. We all know most people don't follow the teachings of any religion except fanatics. We understand that and extreme traditionalists. But at least you know what's right and what's wrong. And it opens up the door to a whole slew of other questions. And this is a very important topic. That's why I'm raising this issue of why they want to go after the archbishop. Uh, my opinion is they should leave him alone. That's what his job is, is to teach religion. And he's very angry at them because they want to eliminate the idea of sexual differ differences. They want, to eliminate, they want to eliminate the difference between the sexes. They want you to believe that God made man and woman identical. Go tell that to the duck in the pond. You people are so stupid that you lost touch with reality. Somehow Donald Duck knows who Daisy Duck is. He doesn't mount Billy Duck. Or there'd be no eggs and no ducks. So Donald Duck has more brains than these hundred people. If you teach children filth and pollution, you're going to destroy the human race. And the archdiocese knows that. And then they have the nerve to say that the Pope agrees with them. And they want the Pope to oust the SF Archbishop. Well, they're lying about that. Because the Pope surprisingly became a Pope again. And stop talking about global warming. Headline, Pope takes on feminist, gender theorist, gay activists. Continuing with his insistence that Christians speak the truth boldly and without fear of the consequences, on Wednesday, Pope Francis took on both the gay lobby and radical feminists by contending that men and women are essentially different and not interchangeable. Starting from the biblical passage, which reads, quote, In the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. Close quote. The Pope went on to say that both men and women are necessary to truly image God. The Pope went on, he said, Not only the man taken in himself is the image of God, not only the woman taken in herself is the image of God, but also man and woman together. As a couple, they are the image of God, said the Pope. Just last week, the sicko perverts at the New York Times wrote an op-ed which said that the Bible can be interpreted to read that gay relationships are just as much a part of God's plan as marriage between man and woman. That's nonsense. That's utterly, utter nonsense. You know, it's one thing to say you're gay and practice your gay lifestyle. It's another thing to try and twist reality, number one, twist biology, number two, and then twist Catholic doctrine and all religious doctrine, number three. So now they're going after the church itself, and they want to destroy it here in San Francisco. So the fact of the matter is this is a big story. But again, i got to go back to the big picture. And the big picture is this. If you don't like the doctrine of a church, then leave the church. But don't, change the, don't try to change the church's doctrine. Now, I'm not a biblical absolutist. I've told you that a hundred times on this show, if I told you once. If I've learned one thing from watching the radical Islamists rampage across the planet these many years I've been on the radio, it's that those who interpret their Bible literally will destroy the earth. Listen to what I just said. So you're saying, hey, Savage, you can't have it both ways. That's not what I said. I didn't say that. The Islamists kill you if you don't adhere to their ninth century vision of Islam. The Catholics don't kill you if you don't follow the doctrine of the Catholic Church, but at least they tell you what the doctrine is. Now let's turn to the Jewish people. Reformed Jews are basically Christians with a star of David in front of the temple rather than a cross. There's no difference between Reformed Jewish temples and churches, in my experience. None. The same thing. Maybe they have a bagel now and again to distinguish themselves from the rye bread or whatever. Instead of white bread, they have a bagel, whatever. And they tell a, a joke with an, or whatever. Nothing. So now you have a growing Orthodox Jewish presence in America and the world, and they interpret the laws quite literally. Very literally. They have 300 and some odd commandments, not 10. And they wear the prayer shawls and they put on phylacteries. Look it up. 
And the prayer shawl has these fringes, these 300 and some odd fringes, which symbolize these commandments. And they follow the Bible quite literally, but they don't stone women to death who commit adultery. They don't kill homosexuals, thank God. But they know right from wrong. And they teach this doctrine to their children. So therefore, their children know what's right and wrong. So do you understand what we're discussing today? We're looking at bullies in the gay community, bullies in the business community, bullies in the media, bullies everywhere who are trying to impose their worldview on everyone else, and now they're trying to twist the church into something it is not. And that's my opening. And I'm Michael Savage. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. All right, so I wake up, I do the coffee, I do the uh, news scanning, the sites, and I lo go to the local... Uh, Degenerate. When I say degenerate, I don't mean it's sexual. I mean it's degenerate as a news site. It's of no value whatsoever. And I see a headline: Prominent Catholics call on Pope to oust the SF Archbishop. I said, "What? In an unprecedented move, more than a hundred so-called prominent Roman Catholic donors—they're all bullies. They're bullies. They're trying to bully the Church into getting rid of a Archbishop Cordelioni because he's a traditional Catholic. They want a, and they want an Episcopalian bishop in there. You get it?" They want, like, a, a gay woman as uh, an archbishop. Then they'll be happy. Someone who gets up and tells your children to believe in same-sex same marriage, adultery, whatever. Now, what's the point of the church, then? In other words, if you're trying to teach your children values, you teach them religion. If you don't care about values, then you don't join a church or a synagogue. And by the way, what do your Muslim friends teach their children in San Francisco? All you brave, prominent San Francisco Catholics! Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Savage. Of, uh, ...rules from a church leader, even if you can't follow them, at least you know what's right and wrong. Say they want to change it so you don't even know right from wrong. Thou shalt not steal. Nah, you can steal a little bit if you're a Democrat. Take away money from people who earn it. If you go down the Ten Commandments, I'll show you that the Democrats violate all of them in all their policies. Every one of their policies violates the Ten Commandments. And now they're going to the church itself. It wasn't bad enough that they broke the church on false molestation accusations. Some were true, no doubt, but a lot of it were greedy, scum lawyers who broke the churches. They made it up. Yeah, he touched me 30 years ago. This way to the, to the bakery line. So now that they destroy the church financially, they want to go after the church morally. And they're going after it in the most devious, bullying manner imaginable. They want to replace an archbishop in San Francisco who actually teaches the doctrines of Catholicism. So where does it end? Tell me where it ends. Where you have open um, prostitution in the church in, in, in five years? That's what had once existed, by the way. If you look back in the history of the church, there, was, there were hookers in the back of the church in order to raise money. You think I'm making that up, don't you? I'm not making it up. Church was in trouble, I think the 1700s, I don't know when. So they brought in a few uh, ladies of the night in the back of the pews to generate a little, uh, you know, cash, cash flow. So you say, well, what's different? Well, the difference is, is that you have people teaching what's right and wrong. They don't have hookers in the back of the church. If these hundred so-called prominent Catholics want to get rid of this traditionalist as an archbishop, what's next? Ah, so you have hookers in the back. And by the way, I want a money-changing table in the back, too. We want to have a window where you can exchange currency in the back. How about some ads on the pulpit? Why don't have rotating ads over the, uh, in the front of the Catholic Church to bring in some money? How about a foot washing uh, station where illegal aliens can step right up and stick a foot in? And when Nancy Pelosi's not available, they have the foot washed automatically. It's crazy. It's just nuts. So then you go to the other religions. Are you telling me that Muslims don't teach their children the same thing? It's the same... Same uh, premise, by the way. I know Islam doesn't teach that same-sex marriage is permissible. Are you aware of that? Then why aren't they calling for the ouster of an imam or several in San Francisco who teach uh, traditional uh, doctrine? Tell me why. Why are they not teaching, uh, going after rabbis in the city who are orthodox, who teach the same thing? Tell me why. 
Why are they going after the Catholic Church? I, you probably know the answer better than I. So this is an astounding story. They hate this uh, Archbishop Cordelioni because he's teaching traditional conservative church doctrine. He made school teachers, can you imagine, in Catholic schools, sign a morality clause? Can you imagine wanting moral teachers in Catholic schools? That is really disgusting. We want all immoral teachers in Catholic school, openly Im immoral teachers. I hope the church doesn't cave in to these bullies. Brian Cahill, Lou Gerardo, David Grubb, Clint Riley, Janet Riley, Michael Kelly, Charles Geschke, Tom Brady Sr. They're bullies. If they don't like the teachings of the church, then go become an Episcopalian. Better yet, convert to a Reformed Judaism. Then you'll have everything you want. But leave the church alone. What do you want from them? That's what the church is. The ad is disgusting. It's bullying of a type I never thought I would see. Well, in this city, of course I would see it. I've been bullied by this, this, this mob before. When I came out against illegal aliens, they picketed my radio station. I came out against the dreamers, so-called. They picketed my radio station. They tried to bully me. I'm used to bullying. And there's only one answer to it. Stand up to them and expose them for the hypocrites that they are. That's all. I could ask you a question about this, but I don't know what the question is. I really don't have a question for you. All I have is the story and the commentary that I've given you thus far on this issue, which is quite... I, it's an interesting story. You hear this? And the fact is, there's only one biblical truth. You can't distort it by changing the Bible. If this is not stopped, they'll next be burning Bibles. That's what they're going to do next. They're going to burn Bibles. That's what they're going to do. They're going to burn Bibles next and say, that's fairness. You hearing me? They'll burn Bibles, that's all, because it, it violates the protocols of the elders of San Francisco. Protocols of the Elders of San Francisco. All the big money. All the big money. All the big money. And this is in San Francisco, which, as you well know, is a shameful city that's laughed at around the world. It's fundamental. San Francisco is fundamentally, and, and I, I, I love the charm of the city. It's an anachronism in that it's really made basically people from small towns around the country who think they're wild and free by doing absurd things. They think that everyone thinks they're cool and wild. It's like the old jokes about people with check pants from Poland. I mean, they're not really wild and free. Sisters of perpetual indulgence. Gay men with beards who dress up as nuns disgust me. But who could care? I could care less about them. They're sick in the head, and the city thinks that they're, they're role models for your children. So now they're going after the church itself. That's all. What do you want to talk about? You, you, you agree with me that this is an outrage or not? Is there a Muslim in the crowd from San Francisco who can tell me that any imam in this city does not agree with the same doctrinal beliefs as that of uh, the Catholics and the archdiocese? Is there one Muslim? I want a Muslim to call and say, no, Michael Savage, you're wrong. We teach that gay marriage is sacred. We teach that if you look at the Quran the right way and the wrong way and the this way and the that way and the upside down way and you turn it around, come on. Religion is religion. We know what it is. It's red lights and it's green lights. Doesn't mean we all follow them, but don't try to change the book. Or you'll have cars crashing into each other if you try to make a red light, a green light, a green light, a red light. You'll have cars crashing into each other, which is what we have already. It's not bad enough the filth that Harvey Weinstein and his friends put out in Hollywood and poison the mind of the world. It's not bad enough that we have that to deal with. So now the last bastion of morality and sanity, uh, as shall I say, religious doctrine in the Christian world happens to be in the Catholic Church by the way. So that's where they're going after it, because it's very traditional. Why are there no attacks upon Orthodox Jews who believe the same exact thing? Why don't these hundred prominent Catholics go after Orthodox Jews and say they should replace rabbis who teach this? Tell me why. Because they'd be called anti-Semites. Why don't they go after imams who teach the very same thing? Because they'd be called Islamophobes. So I will call them what they are, bullying Christophobes, all of them. Catholics in name only. How do you make that into an acronym? Catholics in name only. Catholic in, chemo? I know chemo, Catholics in name only, because I know what a rhino is. A rhino is a Republican in name only. So Catholics who attack the doctrine of the Catholic Church are Catholics in name only. We call them kinos? Kinos. Kinos. Kind of kinos. Yeah, they're kinos. Or chinos. 
which in Italian means something else than what I'm saying. I better be careful. I don't know what it means in Italian. I'll find that in a dialect. I just committed a curse word. All right, what do you want to say on this before I move on to other topics? Huh? And who's the best caller out there? All right, we'll start on the... Is there no one in San Francisco calling? What is wrong with these people? Where are they? I have the biggest show in the city and no one's listening to it. Where are they? Afraid to call? I didn't give the number out, okay. 855-400-7282. The boldest talk show in San Francisco is Michael Savage's radio show. Even gay people love me. Gays who are not, who are not doctrinal gays love this show. They like the boldness of it because they know I'm out there. I'm out there with what I actually believe. At least they can relate to it. They're taking the risk of being out sexually. Well, I'm being out politically. How's that? Is that allowed? I'm out politically. You like that, Robert? You're out sexually? Good. I'm out politically. Now deal with it. All right, we'll start in New York. I'm trying to start in the West. I'll start somewhere else. Let's start in Texas, the Bible Belt. Dan, uh, BAP is in Dallas. You still have Bibles down there, guys? Oh, yeah. Yep. Are there still Bibles allowed in Dallas? Uh, Daniel on WBAP, uh, welcome to the Savage Nation. Well, thank you, Dr. Savage. Uh, I just wanted to make the point that uh, it doesn't matter what you say the Bible says. The Bible's been, it was written thousands, thousands of years ago. Just because you want to make it uh, come across that what you're doing is right, doesn't mean that it's going to. You well, but they're trying to throw out an archbishop who teaches the Bible in its traditional form. And the next step will be to burn the Bibles. That's what's coming. Well, you know what? That's fine. You can go ahead and burn all the Bibles you want, but it doesn't mean that you're going to go where you want to go. <laughs> well, I'm trying to show you the intolerance of San Francisco and the level of bullying. Well, I'm a truck... And my feeling is, is that if they don't like the Catholic Church, they should leave it. And they can support another church which supports the LGBT lifestyle, so-called. They can accept Catholicism or reject it. They live in a free country, but they cannot... They cannot change the church teachings only because it doesn't conform with their viewpoint. It's absurd. Exactly. And by the way, what about all of the radical gays forcing people of other beliefs, telling them they must acquiesce to their activities without objection? The bakery situation, the pizza, the pizza parlor, coercing schools, businesses. Now they want to coerce the church itself. We don't even have to talk about entertainment. That was gone a long time ago. So, you know, it comes down to this. It comes down to do what you want. As uh, who was it who wrote the French philosopher I read in college? I know the French. Fesica Vaudra, do as you will. I think it was Rabelais. Uh, he started the whole liberal revolution, by the way. Did you know Rabelais started the, the liberal revolution? You wouldn't know that if you never went to college, if you just majored in being a golf caddy. Rabelais wrote Fesica Vaudra. And he wrote it a few hundred years ago, meaning do as you will, just leave me alone. And yeah, that goes back to the whole story. I mean, if you're not religious, don't be religious. Be an atheist. Wear a cross and don't practice any religion, like most Americans. I love you to see a, a show on hookers, they're wearing a cross. What is that about? Every time I turn on a, a movie, I see the most vile-looking women who are wearing crosses. I don't understand how that works. What is it, just a piece of jewelry? I guess. So there it is. Religion, religion, religion incorporated. You don't like it? Then pr go to another church, boys and girls. Become an Episcopalian. You don't have to change anything there. The arch bugaboos in the Episcopalian church are there for you. They do exactly what you want them to do. They teach about global warming even though they don't know the first thing about it. Everything that they tell you is just a part of the doxy of the liberal establishment. At least that's my viewpoint. Boys and girls, don't leave any money on the table. You notice the whispering that Obama used in that tax thing is exactly what Michelle uses? When she gets down to make a point, she emphasizes it with a whisper. I'm going to incorporate that in my act. I find it works very well because if you can stay on one cadence, the whole show, people don't listen to you. But if you go from, I'm telling you this is the right way to look at things, and boys and girls, if you don't like to look at it, then go to another church. Doesn't that work for you, Robert? Changing turns out. It's a little bit. It's good. It's hard for me to change, though. Is there anyone calling from San Francisco? No, not one caller. How, how's that possible? I have huge ratings on this on KSFR. Are they not awake yet? Oh, it's a quarter to one on the West Coast. They're still working. 
They can't listen to me until the last hour. These are the working people. Well, the reason Cumulus gave me this time slot is because they wanted me on the East Coast during drive time, which is the most important time slot in radio. So I had to take uh, the 12 to 3 job here in uh, San Francisco. It's all the same to me. His show's playing somewhere at some time around the uh, night. They got replays in the middle of the night somewhere. I don't know where, but they play at 1 to 4 in the morning. I don't, I don't like DBs. I like live. So let's go for a quick caller. When the minute I come back, and we'll talk more about what is the balance between traditional religious doctrine and actual life? That's really the question of the day. As I wait for my French fries and grease burger, I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So a group of bullies in San Francisco called Prominent Catholics want an SF Archbishop fired because he's teaching traditional Catholic doctrine. They call it intolerance. You know what that is. You know what intolerance really is. This all started in the 70s where the <clears throat> mean-faced, clipped-haired women would say, don't be judgmental. Do you remember in the 70s people say, don't be judgmental? It's, it struck me as odd. What do you mean, don't be judgmental? I said to them, we have to make judgments all day long in order to survive. If I'm sitting at a dining table and there's a salt shaker, I make a judgment. I don't want to put salt on my food because I know that it'll cause hypertension. So I don't put salt on my food. If I'm uh, driving a car and it says 55 miles an hour, if I go 95, I'm making a judgment to uh, risk my life. Am I not? If I, that's judgmentalism. I mean, you have to make judgments on every level in order to survival. survive. So now we have these activists telling us not to be judgmental, to be in inclusive and tolerant. As you, as you know, those are code words for do as I say or else. So that's why I'm talking about this. And I'm not even Catholic, but it, it, this will po it'll poison all religion. In other words, either you believe in religion or you don't. I don't happen to go to a religious thing at all. I'm, I'm uncomfortable, increasingly uncomfortable in any house of worship lately. After the Muslims came along with the murder and the killing in the name of religion, I, I, I turned away from it. I, I'll be honest with you. I read the Bible once in a while, and I find wisdom in it here and there. And I find a lot of baloney in it here and there. And uh, I mean, just telling you my own personal viewpoint. But I know that when I die, there'll be a religious service. That's the, that's the sad truth. You know, it still awaits me. And uh, I mean, the thing is, is that it's just things don't, certain things never change. Never, and they never will. In, in 100,000 years, nothing's going to change. And it shouldn't. And that's why our children are not having children. It's why our children are confused. It's why our children are sticking drugs in their nose and in their, in their mouth. It's because everyone's afraid to tell them, don't do it, Johnny. Don't put that joint in your mouth, moron. You'll make yourself dumber than you already are. Someone's got to tell the children something. So that's where church comes in. That's why people traditionally sent their children to Catholic school. They wanted a, quote, strict upbringing. Isn't that why you sent them to Catholic school? Because you knew it wasn't as sick and polluted as a regular school? The nuns cracked the, 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 the ruler on their hands? Isn't that what it was about? Now they want to change that. That's my feeling. That's one man's opinion. KSFO, Alina, welcome to the Savage Nation. Fire away 30 seconds or less. Hi, Michael. This is Alina. I am um, a native San Franciscan of three generations. There are many of us Catholics who bust our tails to keep our kids in Catholic schools here in the Communist Bay Area. So and how do you feel about guys like Clint Riley and Brian Cahill telling you that you should fire your traditional archbishop, archdi archbishop. You know what? Those those people are, as you say, Catholic in name only. There are quite a few of us who practice what we preach. We're not zealous. We are. Then you have to stand up for the archbishop and write the pope and tell him to get these bullies off his back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is. 
Michael Savage. You know, San Francisco is in that place already. It's, it's been there for a long time, which is one of the reasons we all love it. And it's one thing to live in a place as the debauched as San Francisco and screwed up as San Francisco. It's another thing to try and twist reality and tell a church that you're not allowed to teach Catholic doctrine anymore. That's insanity. Now, we know it's insane, but and we also know that most of these people are bullies. So they've bullied businesses and universities and everyone else. Now they want to bully the church itself. So they're demanding that the Pope fire an, archdi- an archbishop, Salvatore Cordelioni, who has the, the, the guts and the moral fiber to stand up to these thugs and bullies and send out a pamphlet about sexuality to children, asking them whether they had masturbated, engaged in sodomy, or undergone an abortion. In other words, that's Catholic school, right? And so this group of bullies, they claim that they're prominent San Franciscans, prominent in their minds only. Prominent how? What are they prominent for? What, they made money? That makes them prominent? They want him thrown out. They want him thrown out of the church, and they want the Pope to throw him out because he's not in favor fundamentally of homosexual marriage. That's the bottom line. It's that simply that. And they say the Pope's on their side, and they're wrong. They think that the liberal Pope is theirs. They own him because he's a nutcase when it comes to global warming, of which he knows nothing. He has no background. In, he's not qualified to discuss global warming, and he's holding a conference on it. He wants income redistribution. Why don't the 100 prominent Catholics in San Francisco give away their money to the poor? Instead of telling him to throw out the archbishop, line up and give out your money, all of you wise guys. You're so smart. Give away all your money to the poor. So now they say, oh, the Pope agrees with them. They're wrong. Pope came out the exact opposite way. Pope came out the exact opposite way, attacking the gay lobby and radical feminists all in one. He said, in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. He said that men and women are necessary to truly image God. Pope said not only the man taken in himself is the image of God, not only the woman taken in herself is the image of God, but also man and woman together as a couple, they are the image of God. Common sense, right? Ducks know that, bees know that, dogs know that, horses know that, but man apparently doesn't know that. So man, because he's got distortion in his, in his mind, starts trying to change church doctrine now and change nature, change reality itself. So the Pope finally got the message that he was so off the beam, liberal-wise, that he went back and he said that God intended the covenant between men and women to reveal him in a distinctive way. And he said, this is not oppressive. And he said, the essential difference between men and women is not for opposition or subordination, but for communion and generation. Beautiful words. Now he's acting like an intelligent Pope. You hear this? Pope also weighed in on the question of gay adoption. Pope declared that a child deserves both a mother and a father and that neither is superfluous or replaceable. Pope wrote, experience teaches us that to grow harmoniously, the human being needs the reciprocity between man and woman. When it's not there, we see the consequences. Oh, did he set up? See, they don't know this. They think the Pope's one of theirs. They own him. Libs love him. All of a sudden, they love the Pope. They're with him on the global lie, a global warming lie. They're with him on income redistribution, even though they shelter money every which way to Sunday. You know, I guarantee you they're not paying their fair share of taxes. This I can guarantee you. They have the double tri- Dutch and the triple Irish method, I guarantee, of sheltering their income. But let's put taxes aside. Without the mutual enrichment in between man and woman, says the Pope, the two cannot even fully understand what it means to be a man and a woman. Oh, my God. Pope said modern society may have taken a turn for the worse in understanding the relationship between men and women. So the so-called prominent Catholics, who are all bullies as far as I'm concerned, trying to bully the Pope into firing the archbishop, uh, ought to understand that the Pope's not with them on this. So I want to take some calls on this subject because I think it's pretty good. And I think it's a great topic. But i got to back it up because it's a very important question for all of us. I myself am not a religious man. I don't really follow any religious doctrine. I try to do as good as I can. I, I mean, I know the rules. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, right? Oh, I know all of those. Honor thy father and thy mother. I've had trouble with that one. I had trouble with honor thy father and thy mother because that's one of the big ten. And my father and I fought a lot, God rest his soul. We, we butted heads from the time I was 15. Two, you know, two uh, whatever the thing, horned animals are. I forget what they're called. N- knocking our heads together because... Elk, elk, call us elk, uh, elk, fine. Bang, bang, bang. 
because I didn't want to listen to him. I wanted to do it. I was always a rebel. And I was a rebel with a cause, by the way, not without a cause. But the fact of the matter is, he and I fought. And I had a residual uh, pain in my heart from the fights with my father. After he died, you never get over the death of a parent, incidentally. Let me give you a little advice, those of you who don't get along with your parents. Kind of be nice to them while they're alive, even if you don't like them. Even if they're the biggest AH in the world, I'm going to guarantee you something. After they're dead, you'll wish you said something nice to them. That's just a little side note. Just a little side note that you'll thank me for. No matter how you hate them, try to do something nice once in a while and get off your high horse. Okay, and the thing is, let's get back to it. So, I'm not a religious person, not at all. But at the end of the day, I remember my mother used to say, I think children, I, no, no, I think, my mother used to say, she wasn't religious either, but she was a God-fearing woman. And she said, children have to believe in something. So that was her simple way of saying you need to teach children right from wrong, right? So Catholics know that, so they send them to Catholic school. Religious Jews send their children to Orthodox Jewish schools. Religious Muslims send their children to madrasas. Why do they send them to madrasas? Because they don't want their minds screwed up by Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, and Ratzenberg with the, the pollution and filth that they teach them in the public schools. They don't want their children polluted in the, in the government-controlled schools on the reservations called public schools, the public school reservation. That's what religious schools do. They're supposed to teach different doctrine than the polluted public school. P.S. is public school, polluted school. If you don't like the religious doctrine, you send them to public school. Or you send them to, let's say, a, an institution, a private school somewhere where all of the uh, leaders are probably molesting the children. Only the, they don't get caught till 20 years later. I love reading about all these uh, feet schools in Manhattan. Ten years later, they found out the guy was in, in the cloakroom with the boys. They throw, oh, not in, not in Dalton. So it couldn't be Dalton, no. Where does your son go? He's got that little uniform with the thing. Oh, really? Oh, no, great. What does he become? We don't know. Is he in rehab yet at 15? Did he have to go into rehab yet? With your no-value uh, education? It's like a green stamp to heaven. Just go to these schools and you get a green stamp to heaven because you're such a perfect person because you wear a blue blazer with a, with a uh, whatever, a monogram on it, an emblem. So I, I got to go back to it. You, you got to teach children something. They're all going to veer away from it. They're all going to do the best they can and cheat a little here, cheat a little there, here and cheat, there and cheat. Everyone. everyone lies a little bit. Everyone, they try not to, but at least you know you're making a sin. You're making a mistake. <laughs> Don't you understand what I'm saying to you? And by the way, this is a very interesting interpretation of the word sin. When I say sin to you, it's like, oh, you committed a sin, you'd be punished for the hell. No. I have a different interpretation of sin, which I learned along the road, or else I probably would have never survived this long since I'm such an imperfect person myself. Um, a way of looking at the word sin in Hebrew, actually, he, the word sin in Hebrew doesn't exist. An interpretation I read was to have missed the mark. So you try to do it right, that's all. That's like an easy way to deal with it. Ark, I made a mistake. I'm sorry, God. Well, God, forgive me as you're committing a sin. Say, oh, please, I didn't mean it. I'll do it again anyway. But you try, because don't you understand what we are as humans? We're imperfect. Don't you understand that we have temptations? And don't you understand that we're all going to constantly make mistakes, morally, ethically, and every other way? But, and here's the but, if you don't know what's right and wrong, then you're going to continue to make the big ones, and you're going to make them over and over again, and you're going to commit really bad, really bad crimes if you become a person without any rooting whatsoever in morality. So that comes down to what is right and what is wrong at the end of the day. Well, I'm not here to tell you that. I'm not a priest, nor am I a moralist. I think we all know what's right and wrong. We all know it. And we kind of all know what the rules are, right? Except, I would say, the Democrats. They, if you look at, and I have to get this in there, if you look at the Ten Commandments, and Robert, I know we have that somewhere in the uh, sound bites where I read the Ten Commandments, and I do it in a godlike voice, you know, imitating uh, Charlton Heston, imitating God, <laughs> Moses, <laughs> rather. And thou shalt this, thou shalt that. And I show you how the Democrats violate uh, virtually every commandment in the Big Ten. Anyway, you want to talk? WJR, Father, this gentleman is a priest from Detroit, and he's calling us from WJR. Go ahead, sir. What's on your mind? 
Yes, my name is Father Raymond Gordon. I'm a priest in the Midwest, in the Detroit area, and I think a lot of what was happening with the Church, with Corte Leone, and the Church across the United States of America is a capitulation to the baby boom generation that thought that the Second Vatican Council meant to throw out a lot of the doctrine in the Church and to usher in some new type of liberalism in the Church that was going to turn us all into communists. So do you agree with me that these so-called prominent Roman Catholic donors are bullies? I do. I do believe that, Dr. Savage. And, and I mean, I'm glad that you're a priest. You can understand what I'm saying here. I think it's terrible that they would try to throw out the, uh, the archbishop because he's upholding Catholic doctrine. I mean, without Catholic doctrine, where's the Catholic in it? That's kind of part and parcel with what's going on in church in America. Not everywhere. I served in Boston for a number of years, and now I'm in the Midwest. And I think that there is a, a concentrated movement among certain individuals to uh, Protestantize the Catholic Church so that they will co conform to the doctrines that they believe are sacrosanct, which is gay marriage and women priests and married priests and all the kind of stuff that they think that was going to happen after Vatican II. I'm glad you said that, because I said it earlier. If you don't like Catholic, the Catholic teaching, then become an Episcopalian. I wasn't being sarcastic. I In other words, the, the Episcopalians are fundamentally liberal Christians, right? Pretty much liberal Christians that are just in capitulation with other liberal organizations that think that because of Vatican II, they were going to throw out the baby with the bathwater and start over and just deject everything that was... Right. To me, Catholicism is the purest... Uh, Catholicism is the purest form of Christianity, which is not to denigrate born-again Christians, not to put down anyone else, but the Catholics follow a traditional doctrine. It's as simple as that. Amen. Father, you know, I thank you, by the way, for sacrificing all of your bodily pleasures on this earth for eternity. I don't know how else to say it. Did I say it right? You, you certainly did, Dr. Savage, and I've been waiting to talk to you for a long, long time. I've been a loyal listener since 2003, and I've always appreciated your, your heartfelt support for Catholic doctrine. Well, I've been attacked by uh, Donovan of the Catholic League because I came against Catholic charities for calling for the influx of illegal aliens, but uh, getting any support even from an individual Catholic is a big deal for me. Father, let me do this. Please stay in the line and give your name and address to Jim, and we'll send you a fresh hardcover copy of Countdown to Mecca, my new novel, which will be out in a few weeks. Stay on the line, please. That brings us to uh, 19 minutes after the hour. If you care to pipe in on this issue of religion and the bullying that's going on against religious doctrine in San Francisco and elsewhere, huge topic, big story, worth discussing. Any side is fair. If you disagree with me in particular, I'd like Jim to hear, take your call and why. I really would. I'd like to know why I'm wrong. Because my position is quite simple. I'll repeat it. I didn't say I agree with all the doctrine of the Catholic Church, did I? Did you hear me say that once? I said children need to be taught right from wrong, number one. And number two, that's the doctrine of the Catholic Church. If you don't like it, become an Episcopalian. That's all. Become an atheist. But don't try to change the, ch the church. That's my opinion. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Try to imagine driving around on the roads of America without a white line in the middle and without road signs, without lights. Tell me what would happen. You'd have cars going in the wrong direction. You'd have cars crashing into each other. That's what happens when you take away the morality of the Bible. You understand exactly what I'm saying to you? It's, it's a road map. It's how I would teach it if I were a religious teacher. I'd tell the children, look, it's like going on the road. You need a, a, a line down the middle. You need a red light and a green light. Or people crash into each other. And I'm here to teach you the rules of the road. It's called the Bible. That's how I would begin it. I'm a born teacher. I know how to teach. So now you have people saying, throw the Bible in the garbage. Throw the Bible in the garbage because we, we make money and we know more than everybody else. We want this archbishop thrown out, Corte Leone. We're calling him intolerant. That's, that's the code word already for bullies already. The bullies lined up. They took an ad in the, in, the, in the rag, the local rag, to attack him. I hope the Pope doesn't cave in and tells them to go where, where they belong. And if they don't like it, to, to convert to, a, to, to another religion, where they'll be welcome. I could recommend a few in San Francisco. 
So the Ten Commandments themselves, if you listen to them, now they want to change those. You could say that the Ten Commandments are intolerant and divisive, right? Let's listen to them, and I'll, I'll comment on each one. I am the Lord your God who has taken you out of the land of Egypt from the house of slavery. Let's stop right there. Now, to Nancy Pelosi and the liberal bullies in San Francisco, you can't accept that. That's divisive and intolerance. What do you mean, you're the Lord my God? First of all, Obama's our Lord and God, not you. Who are you? There was no God before him. Next, let's hear number two. You shall have no other gods but me. No, wrong. Wrong. We are your gods. We in government are your gods. We Democrats, socialists, Islamist senators, and congressmen, Congress people are your gods. There is no God but us. Go ahead. Three, you shall not take the name of your Lord in vain. Four. Oh, curse them all you want. Mock God. Mock priests. Mock nuns. Why, we have people with beards and men dressing up as nuns mocking the Catholic Church. We like to mock God here in San Francisco. That's what makes us so, so advanced and so wild and so free and so tolerant. Next, or, please. You shall remember and keep the Sabbath day holy. Ah, oh, that's a joke. We go to the ball game on the Sabbath. What do you mean, holy? We're a hundred of the most prominent Roman Catholic donors in the city. We don't believe in the Sabbath. Go ahead. Five. Honor your father and mother. That's a joke. I hated my father and mother. And so should you. I only liked the government. I only liked fellow travelers in the liberal establishment. Those are my real fathers and mothers. And my real teachers were certainly not the church. They were the fathers and mothers of liberalism. Don't honor anybody but them. Oh, you get the parody. And it holds up up to a point, then it doesn't. When I come back, I'm going to take people who disagree with me and people who agree with me. Then we'll go on to other news. There is on the news, by the way. Is there? I think this is about it. This is the Alamo for the Catholic Church. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. I almost missed my cue. The food just arrived at the delivery man. The burger was all wrong. The fries are ice cold. I ended my diet just now. I was doing well. I had it under control for exactly 48 hours. And now I reverted. There's no way to stop it. So the next stop is Fatsoville. I don't even care anymore. Who cares? I'm, the food is so delicious that I don't care. And it comes back to the discussion we're having. Pardon me for eating with food in my mouth. I'm talking with food in my mouth. But the fact of the matter is, it's like, it's like nutrition. I've written books on proper nutrition. I'm one of the pioneers. Look back to the 1970s. I was ahead of the curve by 30 years, 40 years. I know all the right things to eat. Do I follow all of the rules? I can't. Up to a point, yes. I didn't eat meat for 20 years. That's why I'm still living. I wouldn't touch meat. And now I find it hard to even eat fish because during allergy season, my body reacts to fish. So what am I left to eat? I can't eat just vegetables. I have no energy. I need the carnitine. I need the iron. I need the B vitamins that I get from meat. So I'm eating more meat. So am I violating some rules somewhere? I mean, it's like, it's like religion itself. We know what the rules are. We know what the ideal is. And we do the best we can. And that's the same with religion. Isn't it the same story, Robert? Really, I'm making sense, even though I'm eating. I'm not eating right now. We know what's right. We know what's wrong. Because we have, thank God, we have people willing to sacrifice their lives and be our religious teachers. Like that young priest who called from Detroit on WJR. You can hear in the guy's voice, this is a man who has given his life to God and Jesus. He sacrificed all the earthly pleasures to be pure, purer than we are, by the way. They are supposed to be protected by us. And so is the uh, archbishop in San Francisco, sacrificing his bodily pleasures in order to be a teacher of God. And instead, he's attacked by these so-called prominent Roman Catholic donors for being intolerant and divisive. Code words, as you all know, when they want to bully you. So, I mean, I made my point. You can make your point. Let's take the calls, 855-407-282. WABC in New York. Brenda, thanks for calling. You're on the air with Michael Savage and millions of others. Hi, Michael. How are you? I, um, I'm a parent of three daughters who are in a Catholic school in New York, and I went through a similar situation not long ago um, where they were uh, 
pretty much trying to indoctrinate them that we should all accept everybody as they are and that just because somebody is gay and actually pushing the agenda. And um, I went into the school and stood up about, about it, saying that this is not part of my faith. I send my kids to a, a Catholic school because I want to avoid all of these things that are potentially going to come up in the, cat, in the public school. And what happened? So basically I got, I got bullied initially, and I got um, sort of tried to bully me into submission. I took my, my husband and I both went in, and I went in with um, <clears throat> something very interesting. You're talking about the Pope um, coming out against um, this whole agenda, so, so to speak, and um, I found an article from a interview that he gave in the same interview where he said, who am I to judge, that, that, that one that the media ran with, and saying, oh, the Catholic Church is changing course on their, you know, kind of running with that, that issue. In the exact same interview, I, I believe it was when he was coming back from the Philippines, he also compared um, uh, the movement, the, the gay agenda, the homosexual agenda movement in the West to the Hitler Youth Movement um, of, of pre well, The Pope said that? He did say that. You have to Google it. It is an article. I brought that article into my daughter's school, and I said, well, this is what our Pope is saying. He is actually comparing this to the... Well, the prominent Catholics claim the Pope is one of theirs. I think they're going to run into a stone wall. You have to, you, you have to Google this. You have to just Google Pope Francis, um, what he said about you know, comparison, gay agenda comparison to the Hitler Youth, whatever. You can figure it out, but you will find the article and the interview. Well, Francis is against gay marriage. He said, uh, he said, removing sexual differences is the problem, not the solution. And he, said, and he said, acting as if these differences between the sexes didn't matter is taking a step backwards. God has entrusted the earth to, the co to be the covenant between man and woman. And its failure dries up the world of affection and darkens the sky of hope. It's hard to believe that these so-called prominent Catholics attacking uh, the archbishop don't seem to know who the pope is because they think he's going to join them. And they, and they take a few snippets of what he says and misconstrue it, and he runs with it. Right, because he's, he's a big, big supporter of the lie of global warming, a big mouthpiece for the income redistribution racketeers. So suddenly you figure they got the Pope where they want him. They got the Pope that they always dreamed of, a non-Pope, in other words. And yet our morality is as hard-nosed as, uh, as the past, any in the past. But, but the point he was making... Brenda, let me send you a free copy of my new novel called... Uh, what's my new novel called? Countdown to Mecca. Stay on the line. Is there anyone who disagrees with me? Who got through? No? Everyone agrees with me. So, uh, Amy on WJR in Michigan. Go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Hi, Michael. Thank God for that young priest that just spoke who lives in this area. I live right outside Detroit. I can guarantee you that those so-called dissenters are probably all over the age of 50. I lived in San Francisco for about 10 and a half years, and I had to move back to Michigan because it started to disgust me. The reason why we are in the mess that we're in now is because the Catholics voted for Barack Obama. Yes, indeed, madam. That's right. I don't know why or how. I don't know why or how either. They were taken in on, on liberal guilt. They felt that a non-white man would be more fair and uh, make up for the sins of the past white men. Isn't that it? I think that's it. Not only did he cash in on, on white guilt, but he cashed in in particular on Catholic white guilt to get elected, incidentally. Haven't they not awakened to who he really is? What a Machiavellian uh, individual the man is? Not, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> they will all be sorry once you, you know what's coming next is the same group of dissenters. They want to take away the tax status for the Catholic Church. And wait, 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 wait. When you say dissenters, what do you mean by that? Who wants to take away the tax status of the Catholic Church? The people who are attacking the archbishop? Yeah, the people who are attacking the archbishop. They, they want to make the Catholic Church not a church? That's, they want to take away the tax exempt. Status. Well, how could they do that with a church and not a synagogue or a mosque? Because they hate the Catholic Church. Yes, they have a they have a religious war uh, against the Catholics. They've done this for years. They started with the molestation claims, some of which were no doubt valid, most of which were invented. That is correct. 
I know. Listen, I'm a realist. One thing about old Michael Savage is uh, you can fool some of the people some of the time and some of the people all the time, but it's rare that you can fool me. I see, I see things as they are. Amy, let me send you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca, my new novel. 855-407-282. I'm going to go on to the news of the day in a minute, but I, the calls in this are overwhelming. And we're getting a lot of calls out of the East Coast, yet almost none here from San Francisco, which I find is amazing. Really? WMAL, Kevin, go ahead, please. Hey, sir. Uh, I just want to call and say, as an atheist, I'm getting sick and tired of all these atheists attacking the Christian faith. And yeah, but they claim they're not atheists. These hundred prominent Roman Catholic donors say that, say that they're Catholics, but they're not atheists. And they want the doctrine of the Catholic Church to conform to their social views. Well, I think it's all about the pressure coming out of the government to try to make everything equal. And it's just... Well, I would think that big business who need government to support their, their uh, investments, to support their uh, investments and in green things and get permits and do business with the government... I think that they certainly are trying to curry favor with this uh, so-called liberal government. Well, they also could be trying to ride the wave that happened in Indiana recently. Well, it's as simple as you cannot change certain things. They are what they are. And if you're going to attack the Archbishop of San Francisco for being too traditional, then be fair about it. Don't show your, your hypocrisy. Then go after the Orthodox Jews who teach the same thing. And go after the Muslims who teach the same thing. And while you're at it, the Buddhists teach the same thing, incidentally. Everyone doesn't even, they don't even know what Buddhism is. They're so stupid. You know, there's nothing, a fake Buddhist in San Francisco is the equivalent of Hillary Clinton as a candidate. They don't even know what a Buddhist is. They think by putting their hands together in a Chinese restaurant and bowing for a chopstick, they're a Buddhist. They don't understand a Buddhist laugh at them. Buddhists are very traditional people. They go, oh, yeah, I'm a Buddhist. I used to be a Catholic, that means spirit. I became a Buddhist. What is that? I don't know, but I bow and I put my hands together. I sit in my uh, lotus position. I stare. But the thing is that it's not that, it's not more liberal. Buddhism is not that liberal. If you look at the history of Buddhism, it's quite violent, incidentally. They're capable of doing a good job on their enemies. They can beat pretty good, the Buddhists. Don't think they're all peace-loving people. Or they wouldn't have survived these centuries. They're warriors. The Buddhist monks are warriors, a lot of them. You don't know that either. It's a misnomer about Buddhists. I'll go into that another time. I'm an expert on this. What don't I know? A maven on everything. It's not easy to know everything, and I don't know everything. I know most things well. The things I don't know, either I'll not talk about them, or I'll admit I don't know. But this I know a lot about. I've studied religion my whole life. You know why? I've been struggling with religion my whole life. You know why? because I'm a man with tremendous passions. You know why? Because I'm alive. And the stronger your life force, the higher your passions. And the higher your passions, the greater the struggle. Did you know any of that? Write it down. You heard it first in the Savage Nation. I will be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Who is the bigger bully, the church or those attacking the church? Who is the bigger bully, those for same-sex marriage or against it? We're not allowed to have this discussion. You know where I stand on this. Live and let live, but leave the church alone. That's all. Leave them alone. That's their doctrine. Don't tell them what their doctrine should be. You don't want to follow it. Don't follow it. Okay, uh, dissenters invited. Stephen on WJR, welcome to the program. Give us your opinion, please. Hi, uh, my opinion is that, as a Catholic, um, I follow the teaching of Jesus, and he is the new covenant, and he puts away the Old Testament. He says the only thing remaining from the Old Testament is the Ten Commandments. We no longer do eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. We no longer stone people. That's the Old Testament. And people who rely on the Bible to tell them that homosexuality is wrong are coming from the Old Testament. I believe Jesus' key phrase was, the least of my brothers. And I don't All right, so Jesus said accept and tolerate but he didn't say promote did he and i don't think promotion See, is there's a big difference between accepting gays and promoting the gay uh way of living 
How is, how is promoting happening? By telling us you can't teach the other way. No, nobody said you can't teach it. They say in the Of course they did. They want the archbishop silenced. It's like book burning. So by your definition, then all the original bi the Bibles, the Jews should have their Bibles burned, the Old Testament? No, I did not say that. I said if you are... Well, it teaches you should stone gays. Jews don't stone gays, though. Muslims do in the, in the old country. If you are an, uh, a Christian and you follow the Old Testament, you are more Jewish than Christian. The so then you, should, then you should hate them like you hate Jews. You know the Old Testament is the Torah. No, I'm saying, but you should hate them the way you hate Jews. Then call them nope. stiff-necked. Call them stiff-necked people. Because I don't hate anybody. Because I'm a Christian. Because I. I didn't say don't accept gays. I said that's one thing to accept a lifestyle. It's another thing to promote it, especially to our children. And I'll give you the best argument: the argument of survival. Why do you think the Christian religion is dying everywhere but in Africa? Why do you think the birth rate amongst American Christians is so low? Why do you think it's predicted that Muslims will overtake Christians in America? Do you have the answer to that? I'm sure you could figure it out. You're an intelligent young man. Birth rate. I'm saying, why do you suppose Christianity is dying out while Islam is increasing from a demographic point of view? Well, Islam is decreasing from a democratic point or a demographic point of view in third world nations where people have very little to support themselves. But no, I'm talking about in America. The prediction is that. Islam will dominate this country in a certain number of uh, years or decades because the birth rate the birth rate is declining here as you well know for a number of reasons you know what that the reasons are why is it that so many people aren't get, getting married anymore didn't it start with uh, accepting promiscuity no i wouldn't say that's the reason birth rates are declining but what are, what is the reason then the economics what economics because people are too selfish to raise a child I would agree 100 percent. So in other words, you agree that selfishness is the way. Well, that's why the race is dying out. I'm not suggesting selfishness is the way. I'm suggesting that's part of what humans are. And certainly no, wait, you mean that you mean in my generation, the generations before we were stupid for having children? No, of course not. I didn't say stupid. You is know, selfish. when my kids were young, I used to look at guys with a new Porsche with a bib on it. I wanted one very badly. And sometimes I thought, Jesus, I didn't have a child. I could have a Porsche. But I'm real glad I have a child instead of a Porsche in a wrecking yard. Thanks for the call. If you only think of the material in front of you, you're always going to make the mistake. If you go for the diamond in front of your eyes, the glitter will blind you. Yeah, I want that new car. And in 20 years, where will that new car be? In a wrecking yard. But you might have a child who gives you pride, a child who has brought life to the world, a child who has continued the flow of your family name does that mean anything to you anymore a child who brings you pride a child who brings you the reason for living there's no reason to live other than to have children by the way now, many people don't understand that because we live in such a selfish society but having children is one of the most noble acts you can commit and raising them is even harder which is why most men don't raise children they don't have the guts for it number one they're too selfish number two and uh, they're interested only in their pleasure, period. They'd rather buy a shirt and go on a vacation than raise a nasty little child who needs a, a set of braces. And what, put money aside for that child's education? Are you kidding? I'd rather go to, the, the, uh, I'd rather party on. That's why the race is dying out. Selfishness, living for the moment. It's all tied into what's going on in this attack on the church. It's been fun. I hope you've enjoyed the show thus far. Another big hour across America, right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Old content, psychological nudity, listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. The argument to make that we're better off right now having almost no breakout period, no insight, and letting them rush towards a bomb than saying, over the course of 15 years, we have very clear assurances that they're not going to do anything. And at, that uh, at the end of that period, 
Maybe they've changed. Maybe they haven't. If they haven't changed, we still have the options available to me or available to a future president that uh, I have available to me right now. It's one of the most astonishing turnarounds ever seen. If you watch the interview on Fox News, what you see is a man who looks like a scared child who got caught lying and almost admits in a secret meeting with a friend that, yeah, they're going to get nukes, but it's going to be someone else's problem. In an astonishing admission, Obama goes on NPR and he admits his deal will allow Iran to develop nuclear weapons. But he said, I really don't care because a future president will have to take action. Let's hear clip number two on the Savage Nation. In years 13, 14, it is possible that those breakout times would have been much shorter. But at that point, we have much better ideas about what it is that their program involves. We have much more insight into their capabilities. And the option of a future president to take action if, in fact, uh, they try to uh, obtain a nuclear weapon uh, is undiminished. Have you ever heard anything like this in your entire life? That a so-called president would say, well, you know what, they're going to develop the weapon, but some future president will have to deal with it. Have you ever heard of anyone as incompetent as this in your life in the president's office? Do you know that this one statement alone would have led to impeachment if we lived in a rational government, if we lived in a rational society with a legitimate government? Do you have any idea what a, what a, what a rational media would do with this statement? You know, I range every day when I think about this man's madness. Sometimes I think he's actually a power-mad dictator. And when I listen to this speech that he gave today to uh, an NPR, I think he's just another pie-in-the-sky, daffy, academic lunatic who doesn't know the real world. He's like, oh, come on, how can he say that he knows the real world well enough to have become president? That's true. So then I go back to the fact of point number one, which I really don't want to believe. The man sounds like a typical academic nut he's talking about iran as though it exists in a vacuum a vacuum as though it has no background that we know nothing about the mullahs we don't know that they're bloodthirsty murderers who've killed our own troops obama's astonishing stumble and admission that he's giving iran the green light to develop a nuclear weapon but it's not his problem it'll be someone else's problem Here's our problem. We have a very glib liar in the White House with a great voice. We are better off with a bumbler who stumbled on his words because we could mock the president then. And it's good to mock a president. They need to be mocked to control their insanity. Any man who wants to be president is by definition insane. Any man who becomes president is even more clearly insane. So anyone who arrives at this office is an egomaniac to begin with, possibly psychotic, and very dangerous, which is why we have a separation of powers and all sorts of advice and consent and this and that. But with Obama, because he is so glib and has such a great voice, even though he's lying and making statements that are outrageously uh, impossible to believe he would make, such as he just did, most people let it go right over their head. But it didn't go over the head of Lawrence Treeb, who was his professor at Harvard, who I must tell you again is one of the most admired liberal scholars of constitutional law in America. Liberal is the key word. Very liberal is even more accurate, but very highly regarded, spoke, uh, taught, taught Obama. Now, who is Lawrence Treeb? He is probably the most highly respected liberal scholar of constitutional law. Obama was once his student at Harvard. He has taken a job representing the nation's largest coal company, Peabody Energy, to fight the EPA. Mr. Treeb, Obama's former law professor at Harvard, the top liberal scholar of constitutional law in America, who still speaks of Obama as a proud teacher would of a star student, are you listening to me, took a position representing the nation's largest coal company, against Obama's climate control madness. The reason he did this, the face reason he did it, is very interesting. He said that they violated the Constitution, that Obama went overboard with his EPA. And he said it has nothing to do with anything except the Constitution. It has nothing to do with climate change. He said the EPA went over 
its uh, abilities, went beyond the Constitution, and he took this job to make certain that the Constitution is protected. Now he takes his position representing the biggest coal company in America in his legal quest to block the EPA, which is trying to knock out coal in America in plain English. And Treve says he did this because, I'm going to read it now, at a House hearing last month, Mr. Treve likened the climate change policies of Mr. Obama to, quote, burning the Constitution. I swear to God. And, you know, I respect a real liberal. A real liberal like Treve is to be respected because he's representing the Constitution that we all know will save us from a madman like Obama. I think we have that sound by clip number six. You've got to listen to this one. EPA is attempting an unconstitutional trifecta, usurping the prerogatives of the states, Congress, and the federal courts all at once. Much is up for grabs in this complex area, but burning the Constitution of the United States, about which I care deeply, cannot be part of our national energy policy to deal with the problems of climate change. See, a principled liberal not only is to be respected because you can reason with them if they're if they're as, as wed to the Constitution as he is, but Obama is not a principled anything. He's a Machiavellian, egomaniac, power grabbing nut, and his own professor knows it. So he doesn't want Obama to burn the Constitution by usurping the Constitution. And the fact of the matter is, is that Lawrence Treeb is concerned about a dictatorship emerging in the United States of America. And so he decided to represent the coal company against the EPA. Big story. But here's the backstory that nobody but Michael Savage would dare say. They asked him why he would do a thing like this. The liberal establishment has gone crazy. He is an iconic left-leaning law professor who is being attacked left and right. They're calling him a traitor, ripping him to shreds. All of these zealots in the EPA and uh, idiots who are 50 times stupider than you can imagine. Here's one, for example, a, a zealot, Jody Freeman, director of the so-called environmental law program at Harvard Law, says, quote, the administration's climate rule is far from perfect, but sweeping assertions of unconstitutionality are baseless. She is a Lilliputian compared to Treve in terms of the Constitution. They're tearing him to shreds. And others who are not even able to shine his shoes are saying, quote, Treve's legal claims are ridiculous. And listen to what he said. He dismissed the criticism and said that his brief and comments reflect his views as a constitutional scholar, not as a paid advocate for the coal company. He said, I'm not for sale. I'll say what I believe. I feel very comfortable with my relationship with Peabody Coal. He said, somebody wanted my help, and it happened to coincide with what I believe. But a number of mini mi miniature legal scholars and current and former members of the Obama administration say that Treeb has eroded his credibility by using his platform as a scholar to promote a corporate agenda, specifically the mining and burning of coal, which is what he's not doing. What he's doing is trying to stop a power grab by this madman in the White House. Wherever you turn, Obama has overextended his reach. And that's an important thing for you to understand. The power grab, the power grab, the power grab. A plane bound for Amman, Jordan, goes down in the Caspian Sea. The crash yields no survivors except the hijacker. And a cask containing an agent of unprecedented destructive potential is missing from the plane wreckage. A carefully plotted terrorist attack has been put into motion, and the resulting chaos might be enough to push America toward another costly war. Countdown to Mecca, it's a gripping page-turner. And now on that note, what I want to do is talk about a dictatorship of the past, which has almost nothing to do with the dictatorship of the present. There's a long story about the Night of the Long Knives, when the four million brown-shirted Nazi stormtroopers, the SA, were threatening Adolf Hitler. They had been with him from the beginning. They were the street thugs. They were the, they were the equivalent of the street gangs that Al Sharpton 
was riling up in Ferguson and elsewhere. Not exactly as well organized, nor as armed, nor uniformed, but just the way Al Sharpton and Obama and Holder stirred up the street thugs in Ferguson to attack the police and burn businesses down, Hitler had the four million brown shirts behind him to intimidate the population. Not exactly the same, but there's a similar element to it. And the leader of the SA was a man named Ernst Röhm, a battle-scarred, aggressive, highly ambitious street brawler who happened to be a homosexual, as were most of the leaders of the uh, SA. And prior to the purge, where most of them were killed by Hitler, the uh, SS, they ignored this behavior because they were useful to him. And once their usefulness came to an end, their homosexual conduct would be partly used as an excuse for the murders. So why did Hitler take this upon himself? Well, he was threatened by them, so he thought. But I want you to listen to what Hitler said after he killed all of these former colleagues of his. On July 13th of that year, after killing 250 to 1,000 men who had been his allies, he gave a long speech before the Nazi-controlled Reichstag, in which he announced the murders, and he justified the murders. And listen to what he said. It's chilling. If anyone reproaches me and asks why I did not resort to the regular courts of justice, then all I can say is this. In this hour, I was responsible for the fate of the German people, and thereby I became the supreme judge of the German people. Did you hear what I just said? He declared himself the supreme judge of the German people, in effect placing himself above the law, in effect making his word the law, and in so doing, instilling a permanent sense of fear in all of the German people. So what does that have to do with a mad president in the United States in the year 2015? There's no direct answer to the question other than to tell you that history repeats itself in small ways, sometimes not only in big ways. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Iran suspends pilgrim trips to Mecca amid rising tensions. Apparently beat up some, uh, some Iranian pilgrims at Jeddah in March. Abuse suffered by two male Iranian pilgrims at Jeddah Airport in March. Some 500,000 Iranians visit Saudi Arabia each year for the minor Hajj, which involves pilgrims visiting Mecca and Medina, two of Islam's holiest sites. Last Friday, Saudi Arabia announced the ban on Iranian flights to the kingdom for bringing Shiite, for bringing Shiite pilgrims to Mecca. That's crazy. This is just nuts, the whole thing. Here's another one for those of you who are psychotic, mainly those of you who went to college within and graduated in the last five years. All of you need to take some major therapy and get off your meds. Thousands marched through snow protesting global warming. <laughs> the gore effect has struck again, this time forcing thousands of Canadian eco-activists to march through the snow over the weekend, rallying against global warming on a cold Quebec <laughs> city day. I know, I'm not sophisticated enough to understand that it's the reason it's inverted and because it's coming, you know, snow is higher because it's lower, and although it's colder and though it's warmer and because it's extra snow, because there's less snow when there was warmer snow, there was colder snow, and that's why we have more snow, and because of the global warming is the reason that there's snow when they're talking about global warming. Right, right, common sense has gone out the window. An entire generation raised on medication and, and propaganda cannot even tell truth from fiction. If you ask the average moron marching against carbon uh, and carbon dioxide, what if what a plant ingests? They couldn't answer that question. They have about the same level of. I would say the response from the average college-educated moron today about what a plant utilizes to manufacture food for itself would be about the same answer that you get from the rioters in Ferguson. I'd say they're on the same level. And you know, the rioters in Ferguson didn't go probably past the sixth grade. Once uh, at sixth grade top, they wouldn't know what carbon dioxide is. They never heard of it. They don't know. There's no carbon dioxide guns anymore, so why would carbon dioxide be in, in the vocabulary? What is this? What someone told me the other day. This is crazy. There's a trend now in the health food stores. In Whole Foods, there's whole shelves devoted to clay now. People are eating clay. 
I said, what? An intelligent friend said they're eating clay now. My immediate reaction was, wait a minute. Years ago, I wrote a book called Healing Children Naturally. And in it, I referred to a disease called pica or a syndrome known as pica, whereas pregnant women, mainly poor pregnant women and those in the third world who are not exposed to a full array of uh, nutrients, eat mud in order to get minerals. They have a craving for mud. They're craving minerals out of the mud. So where did this come from that idiots are buying? I don't understand it. Why are Americans are eating clay now? It took us centuries to stop being like insects and crawling in the mud. And the morons are now eating clay because they, oh, it cleanses you. What is this obsession with detoxing in America? I know the answer to this. The nation is so morally bankrupt and so dirty inside from the filth and pornography that Harvey Weinstein and company put out. The filth is overwhelming the psyche of America. So the children are going out to detox because their minds are so polluted with filth and pornography and lies so they feel dirty, so they're detoxing. But that's a side note. That's too philosophical for you. No, you don't have to eat mud to get minerals. As a matter of fact, if you're eating mud or taking capsules with mud in it, known as, uh, what do they call it? I forgot. They don't call it mud. They're calling it something else. But they're basically selling you mud in a capsule now. And all of the, the hipsters now with the beards and the cigarettes, the schmendricks, who don't know the A from B, the, the Obama voters, I said the name again. The Schmendricks think that by eating mud capsules, they're going to detox and purify themselves. Well, let me give you two answers to that one. Your liver and kidneys detox you, ladies and gentlemen. Your liver and kidneys do a very good job. Number two, stop eating garbage. Lay off the trafe. Okay, you don't have to eat uh, the garbage. I mean, if you stop eating the garbage... Savage. The Leninist Pope did it again. Again, Pope Francis appeals to America's summit for better distribution of riches. In a message addressed to the president of Panama, Juan Carlos Varela, Pope Francis urged leaders attending the OAS America summit to strengthen efforts against inequality. Now, you'll notice the message is the same as that of de Blasio, Hillary Clinton, the entire Democrat Party. They're, they're all on the same number here. They're singing the same tune about inequality. So this is what Pope said, the Argentinian pontiff said, inequality, the unfair distribution of riches and resources, is a source of conflict and violence among peoples because it involves the progress of some to be built on the necessary sacrifice of others and to live with dignity, they have to fight against the rest, blah, blah, blah. How is it the worldwide communism is opening its jaws right in front of us, about to swallow us all, unless you just say, you know what, why don't you... Begin, Mr. Pope, by selling off some of the art in the Vatican. See, that's another question no one will ask him. Okay, you're in. Okay, well, fine. You really believe in income inequality? Great. Why don't you sell off some of the great art in the Sistine Chapel? In fact, I'll make an offer right now of a million dollars on the line for Rembrandt to show you how smart I am. One million dollars on the table for Rembrandt. Yeah, probably have a thousand of them in the vault somewhere. You know. Unbelievable. They talk out of two sides of their mouth. Income inequality. Income inequality. I work seven days a week. I pay about 60% of my income in taxes to the bums, and I'm sick of it. They're living off me. They're sucking me dry. What do they want it to be, 120%? Who's going to produce anything? See, a guy like me keeps working because I have a work ethic and I believe in myself and I think my message is important. But let me tell you something. If these communist bums keep this up, Guys like me just stop working. There'll be nothing to eat. You'll be eating dirt. You'll be eating mud. We'll be like a third world hellhole when you tax the rich to death and they don't want to work anymore. I don't receive my income like Warren Buffett does with 33, you know, Dutch tax dodges. He always complains. Let him pay their fair share. Why doesn't he begin with himself? Obama's number one loudmouth there, Warren Buffett. Oh, yeah, right. He pays 15%. Let him pay straight up income tax at 39%. Then I'll get, then he can get back to me with his lecture. Then he had California state income tax. 15% for top earners. For Jerry Brown to build fake railroads and to, to flood America, flood California with illegal aliens to suck us dry like locusts. You know, you talk about, you talk about the drought. I want to show you what liars and thieves they are running everything. You pay attention to me because I know what I'm talking about. These liars and crooked communists tell us that the drought's about to wipe California out, okay? Okay, we have a drought. It's bad. So what's the first thing I would do? Limit population. Cut off all immigration. 
Uh, that was the watchword of all the leftists in the 60s. Zero population growth, growth. Tie your tubes. Get an abortion. Just cut them off at the border. Deport them. The state can't carry. Remember the word carrying capacity in the 60s by the frauds? The, the left-wing frauds? Oh, carrying capacity. And a nice one that was. Another conference call. Well, the state doesn't have the carrying capacity of water. So what are you bringing in millions of illegal aliens from Mexico for? Stop it. So I put together for you today 20 questions the media has not asked Hillary. 20 questions the useless sycophants in the media will not ask Hillary. That includes the great geniuses, you know. Let's see. Let's say who's the top of the heap? Who would you say is the intellectual giant in the media? Let's see. Which one? Let's pick the top five geniuses. Who are they? Here's 20 questions none of these idiots will ask her. They're stooges. They're shills. They may as well be government jesters. That's all. Every other day, they're geniuses in their own mind. I'm going to give you 20 questions the media won't ask Hillary. That's all. That's to start with. So here are 20 questions the useless media won't ask Hillary. It was burning me up over the weekend. I was listening to make her announcement. No, before I do that, let's start with her big announcement and listen to the idiocy of this woman, of why she should be president. I've never heard anything like, you know what? We don't deserve a country. If this is what she think is going to make her president, we don't deserve a nation. Listen to clip two. I'm running for president. Americans have fought their way back from tough economic times, but the deck is still stacked in favor of those at the top. Every day Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. So you can do more than just get by. You can get ahead and stay ahead, because when families are strong, America is strong. <laughs> so I'm what hitting the road to earn your vote. What difference? Does because it make? it's your time. And I hope you'll join me on this journey. I wouldn't buy toothpaste from this woman. I wouldn't buy dental floss from her. You know, we don't deserve a nation. If if she thinks we're this stupid, which obviously she does, and she thinks that's gonna capture the imagination of America today, do we deserve a nation, I'm asking you? Do we deserve a nation? that would let a woman like this raise $2 billion. I'll say it again. The estimates are she needs $1.5 to $2 billion to run saccharine ads like this to convince you, the idiot, that she's qualified uh, to run the country. But, you know, there are a number of questions that need to be asked that nobody in the media, Charlie Rose, I think, right, I'm trying to think, who are the top intellectual geniuses in America? Let's see, Charlie Rose, what would he ask her? Nothing. Probably ask her who made her pants suits. Uh, then there's uh, Robert Friedman, who speaks more like a slave than a freeman at the New York Times, who is nothing but a fraternity boy for the Obama administration. Who are Sorry, I said the Obama word. I can't help it. It's happening over and over again. Consistency is not the hobgoblin of little minds. Consistency is the hobgoblin of talk show hosts. But a foolish consistency would be the hobgoblin of little talk show hosts. Better witty fool than a foolish wit. Over the weekend, there was a real whopper of a misquote by the genius. Another, why does he pretend, pose as an intellectual giant? What is he, the smartest man on earth? At least if he, if he was that smart, he would get his quotes right. He quoted one of my favorites, Ralph Waldo Emerson, to attack Republicans, but he got the quote half right, very much along the lines of Shakespeare's half-wit. Listen to this thing on Emerson. And that has proven to be highly effective, even by the assessments of critics of the policy like the Israelis. They've said, yeah, this actually has worked. Uh, Iran's abided by the agreement. In when fact, now they're suggesting, why don't we just stay here? It's worked so well. What? Despite the fact that they had made almost the precise same argument they're making now about the final deal. But, what? you know, consistency is the hobgoblin of narrow minds. First of all, you got the quote wrong. I'm sure you didn't take literature at Columbia, but the actual Emerson quote, of which I'm an expert, is this, Mr. President. The key word is, it's a foolish consistency, is the hobgoblin of little minds. That's the actual quote of Ralph Waldo Emerson. And if you leave out the word foolish, well, better a witty fool than a foolish wit, as Shakespeare said. He got that one wrong. And secondly, I don't know when Israel said that the deal with Iran was good, since the Ayatollah Shmanola, uh, who does, he doesn't know the Ayatollah from Shinola, as far as I can tell, because the Ayatollah said that they got the best of the Americans. When did the Israelis say they loved a deal? 
Over the weekend we read, the enemy has conceded to our nuclear red line, says Iran. Shinola there in Iran said that the enemy, that's us, has conceded to our nuclear red lines. That's the chief Shinola there with the shoe polish rag on his head. How is it that we can have respect for theocrats who are living in the ninth century? Why are they not ridiculed in this country? Tell me why. Why? Tell me why. Tell me why. I read that uh, Saudi Arabia has cut out people visiting Mecca. That was pretty shocking that they don't want them traveling to Mecca. There's been a few incidents of Iranians getting beaten up by other Muslims in uh, Saudi Arabia. And there's another couple. Who knows the reason, but they're not letting them go into Mecca. Yes, indeed. A foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds. Now, that applies to the RNC, that's for sure. Emerson would have had that one right with regard to Rebian Prissus or whatever his name is. Just take a look at him and you know he can't run the party right. <laughs> the president is like a kid. You remember the bumper cars when you were a kid? I was thinking about that driving to work today. How I used to love the bumper cars, and I haven't been on one in so many years. I love bumper cars. Unfortunately, today, with all the drugs and the illegal aliens driving on the roads, it's sort of like driving uh, with bumper cars here in the Bay Area of San Francisco. But the president reminds me of a kid in the bumper cars who goes backwards and comes at you head on. Remember that kid? There was always there were always kids who knew how to play the bumper car game. You all went in the same order, but you banged into each other, you cut each other off. That was understood. Those were the rules of the road. This guy is like the one who turned around and came right at your head on and goes, Wee! The whole world. Bump Israel. Bump Saudi Arabia. Bump Egypt. Bump the Republicans. Bump the American people. Bump the Tea Party. Bump white males. Bump cops. See it? Everywhere you turn, there he is like an out-of-control madman in the bumper car. So as promised, questions the useless media will not ask Hillary. One. Mrs. Clinton, what would you do to root out the Islamic terrorist sleeper cells in the United States, uh, stated by the FBI to be in 49 states? Answer the question, please. Two, Mrs. Clinton, why do you want to be president? Three, Mrs. Clinton, can you name one solid accomplishment during your tenure as Secretary of State? Four, Mrs. Clinton, what were you doing the night the embassy was attacked in Benghazi? Mrs. Clinton, why did you blame a video when you knew what really happened? Mrs. Clinton, did you advise the president to send help? Why didn't he? Or was it you who said don't send help? Who was it who fired the generals after Benghazi? Who ordered the purging of our generals after Benghazi? Mrs. Clinton, can you tell the American people where the president was during the attack? Was he really in the war room? Mrs. Clinton, what files were taken from Vince Foster's office? Mrs. Clinton, what were on the emails that you refused to turn over? Mrs. Clinton, what happened to your email server? Mrs. Clinton, how much of your charity fund has actually gone to help the poor? How much was used for personal gain by your family? Mrs. Clinton, how can you guarantee the top secret information was never compromised and hacked from your emails? Mrs. Clinton, do you stand by your story of sniper fire aimed at you in Bosnia, although video shows otherwise? Mrs. Clinton, with all of the secrecy and scandals dating back to Arkansas, do you stand by your claim of being the most transparent and honest campaign in America? Those are some of the questions that I don't think you'll get from the geniuses in the media. I'm sure when she sits down with the stooge at the New York Times, we'll get the, we'll get the same level of alacrity we had from Mr. Uh, Mr. Friedman uh, that we got from Obama on the Iran deal. You know, I got I to gotta take a little time out and move. Give me 20 seconds to tell you something. A plane bound for Oman, Jordan goes down in the Caspian Sea. The crash yields no survivors except the hijacker. And a cask containing an agent of unprecedented destructive potential is missing from the plane wreckage. A carefully plotted terrorist attack has been put into motion, and the resulting chaos might be enough to push America toward another costly war. Countdown to Mecca. It's a gripping page turner. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. A very interesting exchange took place between a uh, reporter named Matt Lee from the AP, who I believe he is the one who stands up to this 
this moron in the State Department, this Marie Barf, who is the product of an insane liberal upbringing, where everything is a joke to her and everything is a mockery and everything is laughing at people. Nothing matters. So let's listen to the full exchange between the Associated Press reporter, a real journalist, Matt Lee, and this laughing stock who should have been fired after she said that in order to stop ISIS, they should have a job trainings program. Remember that from last month? Her answer to the problem of ISIS is not the Koran and the hateful ideology they're following. No, the answer is for them to put down their weapons and pick up I don't know what, a jobs training program? They're going to flip camel burgers in Iraq? Has the secretary spoken to Henry Kissinger? George? I said he's spoken to some of his uh, predecessors here. I'm not probably going to get into more specifics. Why, yes. Well, why not? Because if he has, I'm happy to, I'm happy if he to has spoken to Kissinger and Schultz, they clearly weren't very persuaded. Because I'm happy to check on this the full is, list. This, their, their column mm -hmm. is far from nuanced, I think. Basically really? says that this you don't is, think it's nuanced? Well, I just, I mean, I've, I've read it? it. and I, you know, it, I, it's I also pretty, read it. Yeah, and you don't think it's pretty damning? Uh, I wouldn't say that it's damning. I think that there are a lot of opinions on this, and the secretary is happy to speak to people to let them know what we've done, and that conversation will continue. This is this snotty girl who works for John Kerry who says, I heard, once you hear the word sort of, you know the, you know where she's coming from. This is a co Why do I call Obama run by a sorority? This is the mind of a sorority girl. Now, she's talking about Henry Kissinger's Incredible piece in the Wall Street Journal, written, by the way, with another former Secretary of State who I respect greatly, George Schultz, where they spell out the consequences of the Iran deal in great detail. And this lowlife, this nobody, this non-entity, as they used to say back when, this non-entity girl says, I heard a lot of sort of big words and big thoughts in that piece. Yeah, and there's a place for that. You hear a, a lot of big words. I, I can't believe what level. This individual in the White House has sunk the American experience down to. Now, I've been criticized for calling the president insane yesterday, but I try to take you step by step down the process. I said he is only a man. Why is he above the laws of humanity? Uh, a man can get a cold. A man can get the flu. A man can get pneumonia. A man can become uh, ill in many ways, including mentally ill. Aren't we told by the liberals that mental illness is prevalent? And it must be part of Obamacare because everyone seems to suffer from it. So if mankind can suffer from various ills, including mental illness, why is it possible that a president could not be suffering from a mental illness? So I've proven to you that it is logically possible for a president, I didn't say Obama, to be mentally ill. So now let's go to the specific case of the mentally ill president that we have, Obama, because I think he's showing all the signs of a clear mental illness. Why do I say it? Because the choices are either A, B, and C. He signs a deal with Iran, or allegedly lays out a deal with Iran. He trumpets it as a great salvation for the world. And today we wake up, and the supreme bugaboo of Iran, whatever his name is, says that all the sanctions must be lifted on the same day as the nuclear deal, period. In other words, they raise the stakes. They know they're dealing with someone who doesn't have a full deck himself. They know he's a guy who's going to do a deal at all costs. They know that Kerry is a fraud and a liar. And they know that they got everything they wanted, so they're raising the stakes. It's the way it's done. They're Middle Easterners. That's how you buy and sell rugs. If someone offers you the price that you've asked for, you raise the price. So they're raising the price. That's how they do business. But he said Iran's sanctions must be lifted on the same day as the nuclear deal. Rouhani. So in other words, Obama's been proven to be A. I'm going to give you three choices. A, naive, B, crazy, or C, a collaborator. Now, none of you want to believe he's a collaborator with Iran, right? Most of you don't want to agree he's naive because he's the smartest man in the history of the world. That leaves us with choice three. I rest my case. Savage.